Hi, this is the companion video to the one I released simultaneously about Kaiser Drop Bear Knife, where I evaluated on my ED circle. So if you haven't watched it, the link is in the description and I'll try to pop it on the screen, doesn't always work. Anyway, watch this. This is more of a follow-up to the first one, but you can actually watch it separately because there are some very interesting things happening here that have to do with steel hardness versus edge geometry. Have fun. All right, here's my bench where I do all the sharpenings. I have media in this uh, knife tote here. Here are the two sharpeners. This is Zarilk. I've used it for a few months now. Very happy with this uh, device. And uh, this is brand new TS Prof, literally the first sharpening on it. Luckily, a lot of experience I gained on this device transfers to this one. I set up knives identically, so this video is not really a sharpening tutorial. I have to point out to actually be able to effectively clamp these knives in such a way that my sharpening plate doesn't hit the thumb stud and doesn't hit the handle right here before it gets to the sharpening choil, I had to remove the thumb studs and mount them thusly. How much you want to bet somebody's already typing the comment how the blade should be centered in the middle of the clamp and it should be parallel to the back strap over there. None of that is true. None. Zero zilts, not a... From sharpening choil to the tip, this blade will have consistent angle. And uh, I will have to maybe do a video about that separately. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to remove the edge that was clearly, at least to me, ruined, at least on this knife, by the factory. I was able to set it up so that it uniformly removes the same amount of material all along the blade. And uh, the factory angled turned out to be so zero on this plate, and the factory angle is 17 degrees. Same here, I'm going to zero it here. There's a lot of discussion of where to zero. I don't like zeroing it on the rod. Again, in some other video, I will explain it. And this blade has 16 degree factory angle. So some variations are perfectly acceptable to me because once I finish this process, the angles on both sides will be identical. A few minutes later. Oh, by the way, the I'm starting to get scratches on the primary grind because there's no stop here. That's why I added these stops to my device uh, and uh, I am very happy about that. I'm very unhappy right now that I already messed up the blade because I didn't quite think about it before I started. So I'm looking for my... Um, extra color. So here's the split color, or I call them split bushing sometimes. They uh, look like a Pac-Man with a single screw. T10, Torx 10 is the screw head here. So to do that I'm going to remove this uh, This here stop. Color was uh, provided with the set, only single one was provided. And really these guys need two. Okay, so got to open it up a little bit and bring it over here and now we're going to put the rod back in show you while i have the rod out don't know if you will catch it right here there's some scratches little striations because the edge of the media was sliding off the edge and hitting with this sharp edge it was hitting the primary bevel here which kind of sucks Anyway, this is what we do here. We put that collar on, push it through the gimbal. Somebody, uh, you know, if I use, uh, you know, like I translate some of the terminology that I learned in the machine shop in good old Soviet Union in my youth, uh, some of the terminology is different here. So if I make a mistake, feel free to correct me. I appreciate it. It does not offend me. 
um, terminology is something, you know, I can always say, try that in Russian, Father Mugger, if you're being offensive about it. Now, if you're just trying to help, I appreciate it. All right, now that the stop color is on and I just see I adjusted to give myself, you know, to maximize the stone use or plate use, but not allowing the edge to slip. And uh, see, it's turning into sharpening tutorial. Let's talk knife. Uh, this is the blade that measured 63.1 HRC. Um, let's call it 63. I want to say 0.1 every time. So 63 HRC, which is a um, pretty high range for Nitro V, but it's sharpening pretty well, actually. It's going fast. It sharpens smoothly. I have no complaints about that. Back on the EDC meter, we're going to retest the sharpness with a new edge using the fishing line. That is a four pound fishing line that I obtained from Walmart. As it happens, fishing line is ideal media because it comes rated for elongation and breaking strength, much like BESS media or filament, which is also rated at four pounds breaking strength. And yes, I tested both side by side and might do a video about that. Meanwhile, let's pay attention to the numbers. Remember, I maintain the factory angle and already getting a reading of 100 grams lower than the factory edge tested in the original video. Yeah, I'm pretty consistent too. So reasonably fair to say that uh, any edge you put on probably going to be better than any factory edge if you know what you're doing. Let's calculate our average for before the edge retention test. My Bockhorn edge test actually offers significant challenge in all three categories, edge retention, wear resistance, and toughness. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank my super thanks donors. I really appreciate those generous gifts. They are inspiring and humbling at the same time. I don't have a Patreon account, but I was thinking, what if I did? And then my patrons could pick and choose which knife I would buy next. And then I would review it, you know, kind of paying back to the community. What do you guys think? Please uh, write a comment on this topic if you have time. Meanwhile, something interesting is afoot here. Look at the result of the first pool. It's in the same range as the factory edge was in the linked video. And I also noticed the slower I pull, the more consistent is the range. Look at that. We're like nine grams apart. I'm really excited about this. And I just purchased the BESS certified filament line which I'm going to test comparatively with this one. Let me know if it's of interest to you and how soon would you like to see that video? Really looking forward to that. Switching over to the uh, second drop bear here. Give me a second. There you go. I think the knives are really good looking. I like uh, that sort of kind of um, blended blade shape. It's a drop point, it's a bayonet point, has a little bit of everything, and I think this time the blend actually works. So clearly not uh, diminishing these knives. I just think uh, in a mass production environment, companies like we CVV Sencat actually produce more consistent knives, as evidenced by my testing of those examples. I am also looking forward to testing uh, CGRBs as they come out because I think there's potential there. Watching some uh, SHOT Show videos, they are coming up with some interesting knives and uh, they're trying these new locks so they're not afraid. So I'm really, really looking forward to putting them on my channel. However, comma, but I do need some resources to do all this. So. Really, uh, sorry about the cry for help here, but here we go. All right, so this also dropped way below the factory edge pull force or cutting force. 
And again, I'm getting very consistent results, more so than uh, with the original factory edge, because uh, I guess I curtailed the striations a little bit. We will be definitely looking at all this under the microscope in a second here. So if this bores you, <laughs> skip forward. But I think it's kind of an enjoyable process here. All right. Easy does it. Let's see. Yeah, look at this. We're within grams. So I am very satisfied uh, with the fishing line approach, but I am, uh, like I said, I spent $32, I think, to get a uh, filament shipped to me from um, sharpening supplies. And I will definitely do the comparison. I just, curiosity befuddles me here. Back to our natural testing media here. I know this part is very unscientific, but I am trying to stay as consistent as I can. I even went as far as measuring some forces and I am keeping it between two and four pounds of pressure. And yes, it does fluctuate a little bit, but I think uh, because I'm doing it 20 times or 10 in each direction, I think it all washes out as an average. That's just my opinion. And again, the pull force uh, reduced by quite a bit. I will throw all the averages on the screen here shortly. Uh, meanwhile, kind of played this. Uh, companies did try to send me knives thinking that maybe I will give them the ooh and ah and ha 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 and bang, you know, reviews, but this is just not me. And I'll tell you what, I am very happy about my subscription base because you guys are amongst the most knowledgeable and uh, thoughtful knife enthusiasts uh, in the field, you know, in the community. So drop bear number one went from 54% sharpness reduction to 30% sharpness reduction after removing the factory edge while keeping the same angle on the secondary bevel. But the second drop bear that was hardened to 63.1 HRC on average went from 45% to 46%, basically the same loss of sharpness as before. And if you feel like we got more questions and answers at this point, don't jump to any conclusions yet. Let's take a look at those edges under the microscope. Maybe we'll find some answers there. As a reminder, I was using the sharpening plates that were labeled to the same grid size. First, starting with 220 and 240 on TS Pro, then switching to 400, and then sort of breaking or weakening the burr with 1000 labeled media. And uh, the striations you see that are very diagonal, they come from that burr weakening procedure which tells me that their 1000 media has pretty sizable diamonds included. Okay, let's talk the edge itself. I don't see anything bad happening. There's definitely some, uh, you know, some material removed from where striations terminate at the apex, but nothing that you wouldn't expect from any knife and any steel after abuse with the buckhorn. Those antlers are nasty to the steel. Anyway, and here's uh, just so that you get a peek of un, sort of untortured edge um, compared to the tortured edge. There's some difference, but there's not a lot. And as you could see, the results were on par with the original factory edge sharpness. So for drop bear number one, which was reviewed, I would say that the factory angle is appropriate to its hardness. So all you have to do is quote unquote, replace the factory edge, LOL. Here's the untortured section of the drop bear number two after sharpening on the TS Prof using TS Prof media. And here's the tortured section. And what do we see here? There's definitely Definitely something is happening. I can't quite tell whether it's chipping. Let's zoom in a little better. So here, I it looks like Apex either rolled just a hair 
or I might see the chip here or two. Um, right there, that's possibly a chip. So this edge, in my humble opinion, could use a slight geometry change, making it maybe less acute would actually make it last a little better. Yeah, nothing, no complaints, by the way, about TS Pro sharpening media. Look, uh, very, very, very consistent, good looking edge. So this video is getting almost as long as its companion video that you should watch first, actually. And I'll provide a link just in case you missed it. I would like to stop here. We may circle back. I'll read your comments and uh, you will help me make that decision. Meanwhile, I would like to let you know that there are two more knives that are about to be reviewed on my EDC meter. And uh, they are Mini Bug Out and uh, Gonzo Bug Out Killer. I haven't decided if I will do them side by side or in two separate videos. Let me know how you would prefer that to happen, but the results will surprise you. I already filmed um, all I needed to film, so I'm being a little coy here, leaving you with a cliffhanger. Write in the comments what you would like to know about those two knives. For now, stay BS free.